first road trip in the SEC. Just just talk about uh, kind of Arkansas, probably a team that's going to be pretty fired up this weekend. <coughs> yeah, another another first for us going on the road in the Southeastern Conference. <coughs> We've had a first road trip, first road midweek, uh, home series against Texas A&M last weekend. This will be our first road SEC series. Um, yeah, I'm sure Arkansas will be ready to go, like always. Well coached, great atmosphere. Um, and then Dave Jorn, I always try to give him love to pitch and coach. He's been so good to me over the years and uh, does a great job. But uh, you know, like I've always said, we're more concerned about where we are and what we're doing. And uh, Hopefully we keep playing great offense. I think we take confidence in from that side. And this is a great opportunity as a head coach right now to, you know, to get with our pitching staff. And, you know, we've been working hard all week to, to get back out there and pitch good. Tuesday started something uh, positive for us, a two-hit shutout um, against a very offensive uh, historical, you know, Alabama State team, Coach Melendez. But this is an opportunity for go, to go out and, you know, probably this weekend will be completely different than last weekend. So. Um, this will be a series we're excited about uh, for us to, you know, from where we're at and what we've played so far this year, we've got to make a move at some point. We've got a long way to go with nine SEC weekends, but uh, I'd like for us to, you know, get on that column and, and, and win a series, and that's our intention going to Fayetteville this weekend. Do we need a pitch and change? No, we're going to stay the same. I think there's going to be some changes that you'll see. Uh, we want to we want to stay again, just like we've talked about with some of our guys in our lineup. We'll apply the same methodology to uh, our pitching staff and probably go with the same three starters. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Camp, Mize, and uh, Lipscomb. Uh, I do think you'll see some changes uh, that already started on Tuesday with Bramer getting a start Tuesday. I think you'll see some uh, changes in our in our bullpen on how we use some pieces. Maybe how we get out of the middle of an inning, you know. Um, you might see some guys that can get ready quicker to come in, try to get out of an inning, and then guys that historically started. You know, if you used a Bramer on Sunday, um, we could use him different ways. But a Mitchell that's been starting, maybe we try to provide a clean inning for him if he comes in relief. So we may do something different in those starts. Uh, and then the elephant in the room, uh, as far as who's going to finish a ball game, we'll still wait till we get to the end of the game. I, I think we got one save the other day just for the number of innings that were pitched. So we got off the snide there and got the one save. But, uh, you know, Clovis, this is a guy that definitely had a had a good appearance for us last weekend and should be fresh and ready for the beginning of the weekend. That puts Andrew Mitchell back in the bullpen situation and, you know, a Bramer potentially on Sunday. So we'll just line back up, stay with the same starters and see if we can't, you know, if I can't do a better job of putting our guys in a position of success. So we're trying to be really positive with our pitchers, trying to find a couple of adjustments we could make and try to realign the pin and try to have better starts and understanding this weekend will be different than last. You, you, you had some lineup changes in the midweek game. Was that just for that game? Will you, will you go back to what your lineup's been? You know, hitting's hard. You know, hitting's one of those deals where you, know, you, need, you need it bats to continue to stay on time, right. so to speak. Uh, um, I thought two weeks ago Jackson Bergerine had really come on and swung the bat well. We paid attention to that. He got in the lineup and really helped us, I thought, offensively for a weekend. So he's still there and helps us. Uh, uh, last week, Melvin Gray had been one of those guys. And, you know, we waited till Tuesday instead over the weekend to insert him. Um, I thought that was a really dynamic double play there at the end of the game to preserve the, the shutout that, you know, he started. We had the 4-6-3 double play. Uh, so we want to keep him going. You know, he had three hits and a couple of them were singles, but at the same time they were middle of the field, good approaches. So I felt good about us. What we saw in practice and his preparation showed up in a ball game. The way I view that, you know, we still got we're back to those 10, 11, 12 pieces that we started before the season, and it'd be nice if Melvin could could offer some of that if we ever, you know, have a bad wheel or you know a bad leg or banged up in the middle of the field, but. You know, he allows uh, Jordan a DH that he did the other day. Uh, we got uh, Buenteo and, and Robert playing a little bit. You got uh, uh, Daniel still helping us in the outfield. It looks like the rest of the pieces are still, you know, we'll, we'll probably still say the same. Uh, Cody Nuff, we just kind of gave him a rest the other night. And I think Hacker got one or two hits and played a, a solid shortstop. So I thought that was good for us that we wanted to give Cody a rest. But very little movement, you know. Um, but you, you could see a little bit of doing some things at second base from a defensive standpoint with, uh, with, with Gray playing a lot better than the last week. Well, you could, you could go back to, to Jordan D.H. and Gray at second. And you could. Can. You could. Or Buenteo. 
I, I just we want all of them. DHing is hard. I mean, that's a hard job. You, you, you jump to professional baseball for a minute for a guy just a DH in between at bats. He's not really in the frame or involved in those nine outs in between at bats. You know, that's a different mentality. Uh, so if we can keep uh, somebody DH and somebody playing, and the next day maybe you got Buenteo, Robert. Uh, the next day you got Bird Green, Robert. Uh, you got Gray and Ebert. That may be the way that we want to attack this deal because if somebody just turns into permanent DH, that's a tough job just to get hits when you're not, you know, playing. How do you look at Arkansas right now, Butch? Is it kind of scary for what their pitching is right now? And, and kind of everybody in the league kind of waiting for that light bulb to go on and hope that it doesn't happen against them? That's right. You, 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 you go to human nature side first, and, you know, you just hope you catch a, what you know is a good ball club with good coaches. Uh, you catch them at the right time, but uh, you can't live your life hoping it's, it's always going to work out. You catch people at the right time. Uh, I, I'm still more interested in us, but what jumps out to me is, uh, you know, I've seen Tacolini for the last couple of years. Uh, the, a couple of those other guys, uh, McKinney, Keith McKinney, I mean, I know how good that arm is and how quick that arm is. So I know what they're capable of doing as well. I hope they respect us to know what a, what a camp and a Lipscomb can do. They haven't seen mine, but uh, <clears throat> they have 25 home runs. That's pretty significant. I think that may lead our league in home runs. So uh, if we can, if we don't make some adjustments, if we make pitches out up out over the plate and at the catcher's mask like we did last weekend, they they've shown the capability of losing those baseballs. So you know we got to definitely execute better than we did on the mound. But uh, I still go back to I'm really staying focused on us and our growth and development. <coughs> and number two is whoever executes the game the best is probably going to win this series. And um, so we're matched athletically because Arkansas is a, a great program. And, on the road in the SEC, but I do think that we have a chance to, to match up against them. Can you talk about uh, your first and second hitters, just how dynamic they have been and everything they bring to your lineup, Joshua and Avery? Yeah, it's been fun. It's been amazing. It's uh, I'm really trying to see, and uh, it's still so early, but um, at times this little stretch here has been as good offense as I can remember being a part of. You know, as an assistant coach, is. Uh, Anything in my time in the 15th year in the SEC, that's as good a one, two, three, four punch. I'll extend it to four hitters, uh, as I've seen. And uh, just Anthony can can play games different way. When he's got a hit streak, and you still know he can run, you still know he's hitting for a little power this year. Um, you still know with two strikes he can make contact and have a competitive bat. It's pretty complete. And then uh, this little run by Palacios is just as bad as good as I've seen. Um, I think he's really. <clears throat> gained the attention of our league, uh, professional baseball, uh, the Auburn people. <laughs> I just think he's really captured college baseball in the last week, week and a half with the way he swung the bat. So, yeah. yeah, when you've been through your slump there, the hit slump, four or five games, and you were, you, you were optimistic the whole time. You said it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to come around. Is it, yeah. You look at it now, is it kind of hard to believe it, it, how much it's come around? <laughs> yeah. You just every, everybody's doing what they're capable of doing, um, and I think we'll still have some. You know, we'll have a day that's a challenge. Hitting's hard, you know. Um, but I, I, like I said, I I think at that time I made the statement. I think it'll be the you know the strength of our ball club. So carrying it on out and that being a you know an identity of our ball club is is important to us because uh, because it's good. Those are good players. Um, you know, our, our pitching staff can, can be better. And in two weeks, we could be having totally different conversations. But uh, that's what I think. Can we figure something out on the pitching side to, to get us going? And can we continue to, to try to improve? You know, Gray's, a, Gray's an opportunity. You're, you're glad that he's starting to practice well and get some confidence and get playing to get him out there because I think he improves our, our defense. Our pitching and defense is important to us if we want to have successful instead of going through a whole year of like, hey, we got this great offense, but you know, fighting and struggling to win games. If we can improve just 5% in some other areas, uh, you know, we'll play good team baseball.